Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. Today we're doing what we call the essentials class. And these are things that if you're going through and treating something or you're trying to prevent some particular kind of health issue, even um, kind of overlaps into psychological issues. Um, these are things that you want to make sure are being addressed. And so a lot of these we've talked about over and over again, and some of them we've mentioned, but maybe haven't gone into a lot of depth. But these are just like bread and butter things. Like when I was doing healing full time, these are things that I just always checked on, regardless of what the person would say is like, let's go and just make sure that these things are, are functioning properly so that whatever we do actually works, right? And so right off the bat is the autonomic nervous system. Now, the autonomic nervous system, you know, the nervous system is, is um, broken up into different branches. And the autonomic function is your involuntary part of your nervous system. It's the thing that runs your body without you thinking about it. Where like your somatic nerves, you would think and then you would make your arms move or you make your legs move. This has to do with like respiratory function, digestive function, just all the functions that don't take take conscious awareness to run them right so they're just they're on autopilot they're always doing what they're doing and there is a component of action which is also referred to sometimes as the sympathetic nervous system or the fight flight mechanisms this is uh, geared towards action and activity and then you have the parasympathetic activity which is rest and repair and your ability to recover, your ability to let things go, um, less focused attention in the mind and more of the intuitive mind. And so each one of these aspects, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic, kind of have a tone and they kind of push and pull with each other, right? So if one is has more tone or has less tone, it throws the other one into like activity if it has less tone or if there's more tone it doesn't allow the other component to function <clears throat> so you know these days there's a lot of talk of like vagus nerve issues vagus nerve issues are simply um like in a nutshell um issues with parasympathetic activity you know later we're going to do a whole class on just the vagus nerve and how to rehab the vagus nerve but for right now, we're looking at, <clears throat> excuse me, got morning voice. We're looking at how to go through and balance these things. And a lot of times we talk a, a lot about an imbalance in the rest and repair mode, but even the action mode can, can have uh, tone issues. And this is usually referred to as sympathetic dystonia. And it's not, it's not as common as issues with the parasympathetic activity, but when somebody has that, they get really tired. It's really hard to get up and do things. Their handwriting changes substantially. And they do this thing where they'll be standing there and they'll kind of start swaying and, and um, it almost looks like they're dancing a little bit. And then they either have to sit down really quick or they drop down to a knee or they'll just actually totally collapse. This isn't something that's life-threatening, but it's very debilitating. And so if you go through and you look at what are some of just the preliminary issues that can happen with an imbalance here, I, I did this in a way so you can have things to read before or after, so you can go through and evaluate when you're going through and treating, but I'm not going to lecture blow by blow, right? We're just going to jump into the protocol. But when there's imbalance here, it's an increased stress and anxiety. Um, it alters the heart rate in your blood pressure, you know, especially if you're in um, fight flight, the blood pressure tends to go up. If you're too much in um, parasympathetic, can still go up sometimes but a lot of times it goes down um causes digestive issues sleep disturbances temperature regulation issues um impaired immune function and in fact in some of the lymphatic modules that we've been doing we go through and we treat this right off the bat because if if the autonomic nervous system is off 
your ability to talk to detoxify is completely negated. Like it is just not happening. It's maybe 20 or 30% of what would normally be happening. And then also um, mood disorders, you know, like sometimes when people just like they can't break out of a, um, a mood where they're, they're like kind of depressive or they're anxious or they're abrasive or whatever the mood is, um, autonomic uh, dysfunction actually ties into this. And a lot of times it is because of fatigue. It could be because of stress. It could be because of an event. It could be because of an uh, um, immune issue, like a really severe allergic response or chronic allergies can throw this off. There's all kinds of reasons why this can happen, all kinds. And so I wouldn't worry too much about why it's happening. It's just that it's there, you know, it's there and it needs to be treated. So here we have choices for you, anise, lemongrass, marjoram, sage, tarragon, uh, blends and a support and no sweat. Um, all of those will work. And this pattern that we're presenting here, this pattern itself will actually balance out the autonomic nervous system. You know, it doesn't completely balance it, but, you know, between using the oils and this pattern, it starts moving the autonomic nervous system to a more balanced state. So this is something that you should do from time to time to tone things, to prevent um, potential issues that might come up. Or if you're going through and you just feel like, God, I just feel out of whack. I just don't, I don't feel myself or something, something's up. This is one of the very first things you would go to, like make sure that the autonomic nervous system is functioning properly. So notice how you feel. Notice your body, your emotions, your mind. And pull out whatever oil you're going to use. Everybody's good there. Okay. And you're going to begin inhaling. You're inhaling through your nose. You're exhaling through your mouth. And do you have a little bottle? Mm. Mm, yeah. Okay. Just to be clear, if you're using something that is this, like a little bottle like this, the five mil bottles are, are fine, but remember it has a little flap, right? So you want to open that up. You want to be able to see the hole, right? So you can inhale from the bottle or you can turn it upside down and tap it and a drop will come out. Five mil bottles, you can just open up and inhale from the bottle. So you're taking nice, long, slow, deep breaths. Your awareness is on the front heart. Don't hold it too close to your nose, like maybe an inch or so away from your nose. You don't want to ir irritate the nostril area. Long, slow, deep breaths. Move your awareness to the back heart. This is the area between your shoulder blades.
your forehead where the hairline is. And then the back head. So opposite your eyebrows, but on the back side. Just pause and be still. Notice how you feel. This is part treatment, part experiment. You want to see how each component makes you feel. Uh, this paper beaming could be another toy. Just pausing and being still. Now we've gone this particular pattern, front heart, back heart, forehead, back head, right? That impacts the sympathetic part of the nervous system. Now, when we reverse it, going back head, forehead, back heart, front heart, this impacts the parasympathetic. It's best to do them both. It's not like it stimulates in anything. It just helps to balance. So like I would engage both patterns when you go through and do this. Don't feel that you need to do just one aspect. Just do them both. Okay, so you're going to begin inhaling now. Your awareness is on the back head. Your awareness is on your forehead, where the hairline is. You're taking nice, long, slow, deep breaths.
back heart. Your back heart, your awareness is on your back heart. in your front heart. Just be still, just be still. So that was one cycle through. When you're going through and doing this, I'd do at least two, maybe three cycles. You could do more, but at least two or three. So begin inhaling. Your awareness is on your front heart. We're going to start over. Long, slow, deep breaths, inhaling through the nose, out through the mouth with your awareness on the center of your chest, the front heart.
Nice, long, slow, deep breaths with your awareness on the front part. Awareness is on the back card. Your awareness is on your back heart, the area between your shoulder blades. You're taking nice, long, slow, deep breaths. <clears throat> The forehead, where the hairline is.
Your awareness is on your forehead. You're taking nice, long, slow, deep breaths. And then move your awareness to the back head. Just pause and let go. Just let it incubate. Notice what you feel. For me, I, no I notice like it, it doesn't necessarily make me sleepy, but it makes me more relaxed and it takes all the rough edges out. Like there's a tension that leaves that like, yeah, this is potentially going to be a good day where before if I wasn't feeling good, I was like, Ugh, another day. Uh, and you know it just it takes the rough edges out and you know you could call this stress you could call this all kinds of things but it's just it's an imbalance in the nervous system is all it is so we're going to do the second half begin inhaling your awareness is on the back head
the forehead. Your awareness is on the forehead. Around the forehead where the hairline is, you're taking nice, long, slow, deep breaths. Awareness is on your back heart. You're taking nice, long, slow, deep breaths. Your awareness is on the back heart, the area between the shoulder blades. Move your awareness to the front heart, the center of your chest.
And then just be still, just be aware. Now, if we go off script a little bit, there's also a little something you can do. If you have some area in your body that's compromised, right? If you have a bad hip, a bad knee, bad shoulder, your liver is not wanting to participate in your bodily functions, you know, whatever it is, right? Put your awareness on that spot. Whatever the issue is, be it that it's pain related or not, and just inhale. Like inhale, exhale, just like you were doing on the energy centers, go to that body part. You have a bad shoulder, a bad jaw, whatever it might be. If you're not sure, sometimes you could even go to the spine. Will you tell that lady in the book, it's like at the end of where it says mood disorders, where it says emotional, I should always say emotional states. And then just be still, just be still. So I, I've told this story before, but I, th I think it's time to tell it again. So, you know, back in the day, many, many years ago, um, uh, when I was doing sessions like in person, um, I lived in Central California, not that that matters, but um, I had a lot of people who were like firemen, policemen, whatever, for some some reason, I had a little draw from that that realm, which was really strange to me because I was not something in their normal wheelhouse. You know, usually they came to me because um, they were trying to prevent a surgery. They were trying to deal with a traumatic incident that happened in work or something like that. And I had a little bit of a reputation in that area, but let's just say we came from different tribes. so coming into my office was very weird to them right and so this one time this guy came um he was from the local SWAT team and you know he was like he looked like a question mark kind of walking in like his back was all tweaked and he was like you know in this weird position and he couldn't get out of it and um you know he said he's coming for his back and let's say we would not talk to each other in the normal world. Like he just thought I was a super weirdo, right? So we're having this awkward conversation and I start asking him like, you know, so tell me what's going on. And he tells me about his back. And I was like, well, is there any stress? And he goes, no. And I go, you're on the SWAT team and there's no stress. And he goes, no. And I was like, Okay. You know, in my mind, I find that hard to believe, but, you know, may maybe I don't know the ins and outs of being on SWAT. And so 
you know, I'm getting ready to do a, a session on him. And um, I I had like a chair you could sit in or, or a table to lay on. And since it was his back, I was like, why don't you just lay on the table? And I put some lemongrass like in a roller ball, you know, so it was mixed with jojoba. Like you don't want to put lemongrass like neat just directly on the skin. But if you have a little massage oil, it works just fine. So I put a bunch of lemongrass on each of his wrists so that um, I could kind of go through and do a deeper treatment. And I'm turning around and I'm like preparing what I'm going to do and everything. And um, I, actually, I left out a piece. Before I put the lemongrass on, he's laying on the table. I look at his forearms and they're full of abrasions. And I go, what's what's the abrasions from? And he goes, well, you know, yesterday I was trying to subdue a perp, you know, you know, basically he's going after somebody and he was crawling on a roof of a warehouse. The warehouse roof collapsed. He fell, hit a bunch of boxes, fell to the ground and had to wrestle the armed person had to arm, you know, wrestle him to the ground, disarm him, and then eventually cuff him. So I said, and there's no stress in your work? And he was like, nope. Like, okay. Like, I, I would be in a corner rocking, chewing my thumbnails going, I'm not going back. I'm not going back. But for him, you know, it was just a, a day at work. So I put the lemongrass on. I turn around and I'm getting the stuff ready. and. Next thing I know, he's up and almost out the door. And I was like, did I offend you? And he goes, no. And I go, well, we're getting ready to do the session. And he goes, I'm all better. And like, I looked at him and he was no longer in that contorted state. And I was like, really? And he goes, yeah, my back feels better. My back feels amazing. It hasn't felt this good in a long time. And I was like, huh. And he like, you know, I gave him the little bottle that I was using to put on his wrist. I go, well, when your back starts to flare up, just use this. I mean, I, I'm ready to do a session on you. But he's like, no, not necessary. I'm like, you know, I don't need it. It's like, OK, <laughs> but. That goes to show when. When I ask him, are you under stress? No, because probably emotionally and mentally. It's just what he does, but his body is constantly feeling stress. His body is constantly in fight flight. Like in a job like that, you cannot put your guard down because it literally potentially can mean death, right? And so he is always in that sympathetic state. Like rest and repair is just not in his wheelhouse. Like you don't do that while doing what he does. So there's a big imbalance in the this part of the autonomic nervous system. And so just by simply going through and just putting lemongrass on his wrists, it just unwound the back. I mean, sometimes it's a, literally as simple as that. You just balance it out because for one, that stimulates lymphatic movement. Two, it takes you out of fight flight and starts to balance out. So you go into rest and repair took some tension out of his body, you know, you just go down the line, never saw that guy again. And, you know, I, I knew some of his friends, you know, because they would come in for sessions from time to time. And I was like, how's that guy doing? And he's like, oh, his back's amazing. Like, he thought he was going to have to have surgery. He's fine. And it was just simply pulling him out of that imbalanced state in the autonomic nervous system. So before we move on to the next one, I thought I'd have you share experiences, ask questions. Let's keep it to this particular topic and not, not bounce around just to minimize confusion uh, for other people. But go, go ahead and either share an experience or ask a question. And you can raise your hand. You can unmute yourself. You can type into the chat. one 
someone said that protocol felt very fortifying. Yeah, fortifying is a great way of saying it. Like I feel like when I do it, I feel relaxed, but I feel like, yeah, I could get some stuff done. I usually do this at the actually beginning of the day. You would think like, oh, you're going to relax. You do it at the end of the day, but it just, it takes the rough edges off so that you function normally rather than being a little wound up. And then somebody had a question, is the wisdom of the heart pattern for the sympathetic? Um, wisdom of the heart is, yes. Yes, it's for the sympathetic. Someone said, super helpful. Mind chatter dropped away pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And even if you notice like you're having like weird moods or or big swings in your in like you're super happy and then you're super, you know, not happy, adversarial or whatever. A lot of times it's just a dysfunction in the um, autonomic nervous system. Yeah, and feel free to unmute yourself as well. It was interesting to feel my body resist breathing through my belly, feeling tighter while focusing on my head and immediately return to my belly when focusing on my heart. We can move on to the next one. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so we're going to go to the top of page three, and now we're doing mental stress. So mental stress can also be kind of psychological stress, but there's different kinds of stresses. You know, there's a physical stress, which is a lot of times the majority of the stress that we feel is more um, uh, physical stress. But mental stress can sneak up on you. It can happen in a day. It is usually a bit more profound as its impact on the, the body and the emotions. So it can cause all kinds of uh, cardiovascular issues. It can cause uh, digestive issues. Um, it can cause mood changes. But one of the big ones is it makes it harder for you to like think properly. It makes you uh, harder to like have your cognitive functions. And think of it like this, like stress for one is a magnifier. Whatever problem you're having in your body, stress is gonna magnify it. But also what happens is stress will start to shut down function. Right. So that's why it magnifies things is like things that your body might do to heal a particular condition. Stress will undo that. So if there's a lot of physical stress or even mental stress, it might cause procrastination. It might cause you not be able to process something like if you've ever been like studying or processing a bunch of information and paperwork and you're doing fine. And then all of a sudden you're like, Ugh, I can't think anymore. That is mental stress. Like that is, it's um, a stress of concentration is a way to say that particular type of stress. It's just you're processing so much. At some point, your brain just goes enough, like I've had enough, right? So stress is something that happens when you get close to a particular threshold, you know, be it fatigue or you're having to change your perceptions a lot. There's shifting, there's changes. All of this produce a kind of stress. Um, it will cause sleep disturbances. It will start to um, affect behavior. You know, I noticed that like uh, if I have something doing, I'm doing and it causes a lot of stress when I start talking about it, like just casually, I say it in a very negative way. Like uh, that thing is just, uh, it's ridiculous. And it's just because it's produced a lot of stress. Right. Um, so you could say that it can it it's not the cause of cardiovascular issues, but it will definitely amplify it. It'll cause arrhythmias, it will cause like high blood pressure, it could cause all kinds of um issues. And then impact on just mental 
mental functioning. Like you could look at PTSD as a very extreme version of this, right? So we have a whole protocol that's for PTSD. That's a free thing that if you think you have PTSD, you can address this. But this is just for reducing mental stress so you're functioning. So like if you're processing a bunch of paperwork uh, and you hit that wall, you do this. Writer's block, like when you're being creative, that is mental stress. Like that's all that means is, is mental stress. Um, you're dealing with a lot of difficulty in the workplace or in the family or something like that. All of that will cause mental stress. It, it inhibits your ability to problem solve, right? So this is very simple. It's a short little protocol. Um, you can also take, like basil is the best thing for this by far, basil. Um, with the basil, you can put a few drops in water and take it internally. Um, that's an even, even shorter version of this. But if you have a lot of mental stress, I'd like to actually go through the steps. Right? So pull out your basil. And begin inhaling. Your awareness is on your ajna, which is the area between your eyebrows. Go to your back head. Now, we're going to go to the side head. There's these little minor chakras here. They're like, if you go to the above the ear, they're a little bit in front of it. Like, not quite to your temple. Like, if you go to your temple and your ear, they're kind of in between the two. Right? Same level as the Ajna, if you just kind of draw a line around. Right in there. There's usually even like a little bit, it's not necessarily tender, but it's like you push on it and you feel like a little like weird, like achiness there. Doesn't have to be exact, but get it kind of close. So you're doing both sides at the same time. Long, slow, deep breaths. With your awareness on the side head chakras.
this the next part we'll probably know right now. Okay, so you're moving your awareness. We're going to do the limbs. It's hard to do the all four limbs at the same time. It takes practice. So let's break it down. Your awareness is on your arms from your shoulders and armpits down to your fingertips. Nice, long, slow, deep breaths. You're still taking nice, long, slow, deep breaths with your awareness on your arms, from your shoulders down to your fingertips. Move your awareness to your legs, from your hips all the way down to your toes, the bottom of your feet, your whole legs. So keep inhaling, but I'm going to keep talking. When you're using basil, basil is very good for reducing stress, but it also, you could say, helps clean up the effects of stress, right? And we have the stress of the moment, we have the stress of the day, we have the stress of the week, but we also have accumulated like agitation in the in the brain and then the physiology from years and years and years of stress and stress can simply be that things are changing things are going through cycles and that fluid movement going from you know a simple version of cycles is from day to night you, you know but 
you know, you'll notice things are going really well and then they're not. And then you're thinking very clearly and then you're not like that's normal. That's like super normal. Right. But what happens over a period of time is this causes a certain kind of agitation in the in the physiology or energetically this energy accumulates. And so when you go through and you start doing this, sometimes uh, a couple of people have said, like, I feel more congestion in my head as this ha is happening. It's, it's, um, it's starting to release something, but the reason why the limbs are important, the, the relaxation of the limbs allows you to release, right? It's like sometimes just because you do stuff in the head, it stirs it up, but it doesn't really always release it. But when you come down into the limbs, all of a sudden your body goes, ah, let's just get rid of it, right? So even if you're starting to feel a little something funny in the head, go to the limbs and the limbs will start allowing you to release something. And then just pause and let go. Okay, let's start up again. Your awareness is between the eyebrows, the Ajna. Nice, long, slow, deep breaths. You know, in the uh, 
African tradition, Basil is referred to as devil chaser. And it's because of its profound cleansing effect. And then your back head. No, I'm looking at my emails. I think if I push on my bridge right there, it's supposed to. I want to take it off. Your awareness is on your back head. Go to the side head chakras. Now let's move to the limbs. Your awareness is on the arms. From the tops of your shoulders down to your fingertips.
Your awareness is on the limbs, the legs, from the hips down to the toes. And takes a weird end job. Uh, the consensus here is this feels really good, <laughs> like the people that are here in person. Oh. Let's go ahead and pause and just check in with yourself. See how you feel. Notice your mind. It's relaxed, but aware. You know what I mean? It's not sleepy. It's relaxed. Like you could go to sleep, but you could also go, okay, stick some more papers in front of me and I'll process it. It's all good. <laughs> like, you know, it, it takes a weird mental edge off. And so, anyway. Let's go ahead and share our experiences about this particular process. You can unmute yourself or type in. Go ahead and, and share. Now, there's a lot of different kinds of basils. All the different basils would address this. So, you know, um, I think we have like eight or nine different basils. Not all of them are on the site, but any of the basils will work. Uh, traditionally, you would use just kind of standard basil with this or even holy basil, um, which is also known as Tulsi. We call it holy basil, but in other traditions, um, they call it Tulsi. And um, again, it's for reducing, you know, stress and the stress response, especially mental stress. So. And go ahead, Marianne, then Peggy, then Tracy. You, you answered my question. I wondered what was the difference between basil and holy basil. Yeah, yeah. So they are they are slightly different um, uh, chemically. You know, they, there's different uh, chemotypes of different kinds of basil, and so for this particular process, um, any of the basils would work. You know, some of the other processes where we get into you know, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. It starts to be more specific which basil you would use. Like if you're trying to really unwind a lot of tension in the gut, for example, or in the respiratory tract, like normal basil would work, but that basil clove, which is not the two mixed together, it's actually a type of basil. Um, it's really good at reducing tension in the smooth muscle. But for mental stress, it would work for mental stress as well. So, oh. you know, for this one, anything, any of the basils go. So any sort of basil you have, exotic basil, basil linalol, uh, you know, I can't remember all the ones we have on the site, but like I have basils that I use just in blends that are not things that are up on site, but, you know, any of the basils work. Thanks. Yeah. And go ahead, Peggy, then Tracy. Hey, Peggy. Hi, y'all. Um, so these are just a thought. When you said mental stress, I immediately thought, I'm going to pick up my bottle of sage. So it was fascinating when you said basil. I'm like, I mean, because I had it. But I'm like, what? Um, so that was just my thought on that. Because <clears throat> mental, sage, sage, mental, sage. And the other question is, where, what does this chakra relate to? Which, which chakra? The side of the head. 
um, it uh, hits a uh, part of the brain called the basal ganglia. So to speak, the basal <laughs> ganglia. I mean, I can spell basal, but I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thanks. This you is interesting. Yeah. And then go ahead, Tracy, then Laura. Hello. Me. So I missed the very first uh, protocol. Um, and after this one, like my mind is just like so chill, but my legs are a little fatigued. So I'm thinking I probably need to go back to the other one, like at break or something and do it. Um, but yeah, lovely. Thank you. Oh, good, good, good. And then go ahead, Laura. Good morning. Um, I uh, I have a, a question about like if you're in a group that that causes stress, mm -hmm. um, if if you took this in, two to three drops internally, and you were trying to shortcut because you didn't have the time to go through the protocol, yeah, that that helps. You, yeah, yeah. And and if you did that, if you waited a period of time, would it help? to do the limb part of it to get it to release? Yeah, you could do the limb part of it. Um, you could also put like, a, it, you know, again, you're you're trying to do time management. So, you know, you put a few drops in water, you drink it, and then you could just drop a little bit like on the joints of the arms and the legs and call it good. You know, that would probably take you two minutes total when you don't have the time to go through and do the process, it, it's a great way to do it that way as well. Okay, so so visualizing releasing it from the limbs would not necessarily be helpful it's, at that it's, point? It's not even that you're you're releasing it from the limbs, you're just actually trying to, um, to relax the limbs and, and um, Kind of allow a certain kind of energy to flow you know the energy is tied more to the the nervous system but um it's it's not so much that it's releasing the stress from the limbs but when the limbs are in a particular state it allows stress just to come out from all parts of your body or it it prevents you from going to that state where you're like, you know, where you hit your threshold, where you're like, okay, I'm done it. I'm done. Like, I'm done. I can't do it anymore. That's you hitting a threshold. And so when you do this, it's like doing the limbs, like pushes the threshold farther out. Like it allows you to do more before you hit that threshold. And so personally that's why i take it all the time you know because you know if you think of like what life has been like in the last four or five years i mean i've been doing it for decades but the last four or five years it's constantly changing it is not like it used to be and it's not going to go back to the way that it used to be so you know we have a thing here in uh both here and in astara like every month i have a little meeting where we go okay let's assess what's going on what do we need to what do we need to change what do we need to adapt what do we need like what processes are are we needing to address and in the old days you would do that like maybe once a year but like sometimes it's not even like in a full month because things are constantly changing not changingly um, evolving and so you just got to get used to life is changing. Things are different. Perceptions are different. And, you know, certain industries like the IT, for example, they're used to having to constantly change and adapt because there's always something happening. There's always an upgrade. There's always new software. There's always new hardware. There's always something, right? But for most of us, you know, we get kind of something settled in a particular way and we go ah i've nailed this it's going to last for a while you really can't bank on that very much you know uh, i i mean certain businesses you might be able to if you're retired you, you might be able to um but if if you're engaging in the business world it's it's just I don't want to say chaos because it's not chaos, but things are not the way they used to be. Like, it, I'm not saying that a good way or a bad way. It's just, 
you have to change and adapt. And anytime you're having to change and adapt a lot, basil is your best friend. Like it just helps you. Uh. So even if you're in a group where you're discussing things and there's like you might be talking, like getting together in a in a book club and you're all talking about the book. And so changes of perceptions might happen or you're writing a book and like, uh, you know, I can only handle so much before my mind just breaks down and I, I can't do it anymore. And so, you know, even for me doing the stuff with the book, um, I'm dyslexic. And so like I had to, you know, constantly be looking at things more than what you know normal people would even the things with the booklet like I crank it out I look at it but my mind processes it very diff differently and so there's always like a stress there so for me part of what I do is I double down on the basil in those times and it just you know it doesn't fix everything but it makes everything much more digestible it makes it easier to be more fluid going from one one thing to the next. So this could easily be a part of your daily routine. Today. I would, I would highly suggest it being, I mean, it is literally one of the things that I do like at least once a day, if not multiple times a day. Um, would you do me a favor? And anytime we hit something that you think is a daily routine. Oh, sure. Say, uh, sure. Because sure. Because I think that would be huge information. I, I would say this this one and the last one we did. I, I mean, even if the autonomic nervous system is pretty solid for you, I, I would keep it solid. Because when that starts to go off, it causes a lot of dysfunction in the body. So it could be basil. I mean, excuse me. It could be lemongrass. It could be tarragon. It could be ANS support. You know, so any version you... of that. You know, just... It could be inhaling in the day or, or you know, putting a little bit on your wrist. And, um, you know, for me, I do sage on my wrist every day. Like, you know, um, might not be in the morning. It used to be in the morning, but at some point I go through and I put several drops of sage on my wrist. If I'm feeling a little funky, I go right for the anise or the lemongrass. Um, one other, so... With the, the tarragon, you could take that internally. Oh, yeah, totally. Same with the lemongrass, same with the anise. The only one that I wouldn't take internally there is no sweat and sage. I mean, if you did, it would be okay, but it's um, those I would probably stay away from taking internally. So and two to three the drops ones. a day? Yeah, um, like two drops. Like it probably is not, you know, I do a casual dosage, which is usually one to two drops. So I usually lean more to the two drops, but if three drops comes out, that's fine. Thank you very much. You're so welcome. And we have some questions and shares yeah, as yeah. well. So um, weird pulsating feeling in my head. I do more work on the limbs. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, some of it is... I mean, basal stimulates cognitive function in, in the mind. It stimulates brain function. But sometimes you got to let go of something for that, that stimulation to really anchor in there. So do more work on the limbs. Would the release be enhanced with mugwort? the arms and legs thing um yeah i mean you're releasing something a little bit different with mugwort we are going to do the mugwort technique a little bit later in this weekend um it, it would help but the basil itself is very specific to mental function you know when you're working the arms and the legs the limbs uh working it in different ways does different things in the body like I, I try not to make it too complicated, but depending on what you're going after, you you work the arms and the legs in a particular way, and then you kind of can go after it or allow for something to release. And so depending on what you use, um, produces different effects. So mugwort does cause a little bit of a different effect. Limbs are very relaxed. Side head and jaws not yet relaxed. Yeah, the, the side head usually um, is one of the more blocked up areas, by the way. Yeah. You know, because it's not something we really think about. It doesn't have a lot of movement. 
because even like moving your joints, you're releasing some energy somewhat, but you're not really moving the side of your head. My dog came over to get a sniff of basil. She is anxious most of the time. Well. Basil is very good to put on the spine of an animal, like put a few drops in and then just rub it against the, like from their tail to their head. It's very, very soothing. Like, um, you know, you're just kind of getting it in the fur, but um, yeah. Go ahead, Zakia. Hey, Zakia. How's the plan, Prana family? Hey, hey, how are you? Good, good. So in pranic healing, when you talked about the legs holding a lot of the lower stress in the lower chakras, would, would you use a different essential oil for that approach? Or is, is it the same application sort of kind what, of? What, uh, what, what are you trying to do with pH? I'm trying. I'm trying to figure out because I have a. I have a because of my knee surgery. I have a lot of. I think unconscious stress in my lower limbs, in my legs. Oh, with with a surgery, you're going to have also physical stress. Like well, you, you well, know, I mean, you, it is physical. It is very yeah. Physical. So you're going to you know you've had a surgery. You've had changes in the physiology. Uh, the muscles are having to learn how to function. Yes, a bit different, <laughs> and so. Um, physical stresses, I would say, are significantly there. Um, th that you could, like if you're trying to do it with energy, uh, uh, green, violet, electric violet. Um, you could also use the basil, but also a, a great way to do it is uh, chakra root cleanser. Put that on there, it just blows it out of the, yeah. Because if you on think about joints, like, on yeah, the on the joints, the leg. Um, Ankles, you know, knees, and hips kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Like if if you're trying to undo muscle memory, one of the one of the best oils that's inexpensive is um hyssop. And there's a lot of hyssop and chakra root cleanser. And so chakra root cleanser will will shift muscle memory, which will reduce the physical stress response, as well as hyssop will reduce the, the muscle memory. So if it's really extreme, a lot of times I just have people work with hyssop, but, um, you know, part, part of even throwing off muscle memory is you increase lymphatic function in an area and it throws off the muscle memory a bit. Oh. Yeah. Well, so would that mean bay laurel on the knees or something? Bay laurel doesn't quite work as well as like hyssop and chakra root cleanser. Oh, just do yeah. oh, yeah, those yeah. two. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. You're so welcome. I found myself yawning several times. Does that have any meaning? Yeah, it means you're letting go of some stress. Yeah. Is yeah, this, uh, good for you. Good for you, though. Like, that's great response. You know, anytime you yawn, you're you're letting go of some energy. But at the same time, your your autonomic nervous system is resetting or rebooting. So. Is this mental stress the same as brain fatigue? Um, Actually, no. Uh, mental stress is ju is just like the ability to deal with. um changes change um uh, shifting cycles um processing a lot a lot of concentration brain fatigue is just the energy level of the brain goes down and so it actually can lead to brain fatigue but it is not the same as brain fatigue good question um is it just that a particular oil is really nice, um, for example, this one, or a big reaction is that the oil is a great match for us. I love the basil, but also loved the ginger lily and artemisia in the essentials kit. Does a strong response show that we need that oil? Well, there, there's a physiological response, um, you know, because the the oils are hitting particular parts of your physiology, and then there is a psychological component. And 
you know, when we get to the ginger lily and some of the other things like the artemisia, they're doing different things. So it's not just that, oh, I like this oil. Honestly, that kind of doesn't have anything to do with what you're, it's nice that you like it, but that you like it or don't like it. Like to be blunt, I'm going to say it the way my medical aromatherapy guy told me, you know, 30 something years ago it's irrelevant. Like it's, it's not about that you like it or don't like it. It's about the physiological and psychological shifts that it does. And so, I mean, if you had to choose between basil and ginger lily, I'm right there with you. Ginger lily is amazing. Basil is like, like a workhorse. Like, it's not like you go, oh, basil is amazing. It's like, it's, it's nice. But if I had to compare it to ginger lily, I take ginger lily every time. Right. And so um, the liking it or not liking it, like if you did this pattern with ginger lily, it would do something completely different. It would not address um, mental stress. It might address some other things, but uh, most likely like it would start to address circadian rhythms and things like that. And so they might play a role a little bit in stress, but for the, the mental stress, basil is your go-to. Go ahead, Peggy. Hi, good morning. Um, I, hey. I'm loving the class as always. I'm grateful to be here. Um, in reference to the basil, um, it, it's been a number of years now, but my daughter was going through um, breast cancer that metastatic to the bone. And so she was mm -hmm. on a lot of pain meds mm -hmm. and we did all different kinds of things to try to figure out what, so I had all the oils laid out, set up and I said, okay, so just, just scan them, run your hand over them and see which one jumps out at you. And says, oh, mom, I said, humor me, just, just try it. And she picked the basil. And mm -hmm. at the time I didn't have all the information that you've given me, which was amazing at the time. I thought, wow, but I'm even more wowed because you have shared so much more information about each of the oils, but the basil has a, a place in my heart in reference to the higher consciousness or the subconsciousness mm -hmm. or some other aspect of your being or its own personal energy reached out and she, that was the one she picked. So Basil is, I keep it right here on the desk. And whenever I get, you know, I do basil a lot. I hadn't put it internally yet. So I'll keep that in mind. Just breathing it seems to bring me back well, into. Well, if you I'm think at. about like when you have serious health issues and like, you know, cancer being like a significant shift in like whatever happens, there's the before the cancer. And then when you get to the other side, you're, you're different no matter what. Right. Right. And so, you know, we're here, we're talking about like changes and cycles, like another way of saying that is you're transitioning from one state of awareness to a different state of awareness. And so this is the idea of what the, in the African tradition, they refer to as devil chaser is it helps with you transitioning out of a particular state into a different state. And if somebody is getting close to passing, it's one of the things you would use to help them with their transition into, you know, leaving the body. And so um, in, in serious illnesses, I, I find basil to be, you know, regardless of what the outcome is going to be, I find basil to always be a very good choice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My heart immediately started racing with what I would call excitement with my first inhalation. Mm. I feel lighter and more present now. Good, good, good. In the past, we were using rosemary for the brain. What is that doing? So rosemary increases circulation to the brain. And um, rosemary doesn't necessarily reduce the, the mental stress, but it does increase blood flow and oxygen to the brain. So, yeah, I know it's like, it seems like it's kind of similar, but, but they're actually very different things. Just like somebody asked about brain fatigue, you know, brain fatigue still of the brain, but it's, um, it's like further down the line. If there's enough mental stress, eventually it turns into brain fatigue, but, um, 
you know, the, we use sage a lot for, for brain fatigue issues. It doesn't really redress, um, address the mental stress, but it undoes the prolonged effects of, of um, the fatigue that can come from it. And so here we're just targeting the mental stress. Feeling slightly nauseous. Uh, probably do a little bit more work on the arms and legs. Yeah. Um, sometimes when you let go of some mental stress, part of what it does is it uh, impacts the respiratory tract and it impacts the cardiovascular system and it also impacts the digestive tract. So you want to go through and unwind um, that. You can either do the limbs or you can go right to the to the abdominal cavity and just inhale on that area. Usually in this particular case, it means something's coming out, but still help, help it to release. Arms and legs always help it to move. Um, apparently you were garbled for a bit. What was, um, what is more blocked? Um, the side head chakras? Yes, side head chakras. That In your head, that is usually the most blocked area is the side head. Yeah, go ahead, Helen. Hey, Helen. <laughs> Hi, Greg. Um, Heggy you said something that that made me think of a question, which sure. is, does like if you do these uh, oils and patterns a lot, mm -hmm. does the body retain a memory of those? Yeah. And great question. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You're, okay. you're you're almost like setting a pathway so that. Even if you're not using the oil, you, you know, that's the the beauty of using the patterns is you're you're establishing like an energetic pattern in the body so that when you do hit like that stress state, your body's able to like process it and release it much faster versus just taking it internally or just inhaling it. You know, just inhaling the basil will actually reduce mental stress. But if you do the pattern, it's like it's going deeper and you're you're teaching the the mental faculties, the brain, like when this happens, let it go. Like so, you know, it's a lot like the the best way that I can always think of um saying this is like when you're doing the patterns, it's a lot like when you come to a meadow and it's full of snow and you know it's been untouched that first time across kind of hard, kind of sucks a little bit. Like it's a lot of effort to get it across. But then you come back to it the next day, that pattern's there. And it's like, oh, I can get there to there much easier. And by the fourth or fifth day, like that pattern is really carved into the meadow. The same thing happens to your energy body. And that's same really exact, interesting. Yeah, same exact thing. I mean, that's the whole premise with um, the Lord's Prayer. You know, uh -huh. doing the Lord's Prayer when you move it from center to center is you're establishing patterns in the body so that it just moves. Wow. Yeah. So so I'll just share my experience is uh -huh. um, sometimes um, when I get like a foot, leg, foot cramp or a leg cramp, mm -hmm. I always keep um, a bottle of marjoram right by yeah. the bed. And I've gotten to the place where sometimes all I have to do is say the word marjoram. <laughs> the cramp goes nice. away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, that is really cool. Right. So, very, very I, cool. I, I find that kind of interesting because there's been times where, like you said, I'm laying in bed and uh, like I would like to, uh, like, you know, improve my dream or fall asleep. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to get up and get the valerian or the spike nard or something like that. I haven't tried it with the foot cramps, but I'll just start thinking about the plant. Uh -huh. And then all of a sudden it's almost like, you have that connection and there is a little bit of an uh, energy exchange there. And so, you know, the, the plant empowerment techniques, you know, at the beginning of the booklet, like it really amplifies that connection. And, yeah. you, you know, even though we're talking about a bottle of oil, there's still the divas that are associated with that. And there is a communication that can happen with them. And so there's certain practices um, where uh, a person would connect to that plant, to that diva, 
and then instead of having the plant try to project the energy of that plant and a lot of times when somebody's very good at it you can actually start smelling the plant oh wow yeah wow yeah so maybe we should just start a practice of when we use the oils just to just give gratitude yeah, gratitude, a little invocation, you know, putting it up to your Ajna, you know, holding it in your heart. You know, the the plant empowerment technique is to like really connect, but you can just go like if you've already done it or you've done it with even other plants, you can just go to like the kind of the last pieces and uh -huh. just any version of that would work. Cool. All right. Yeah. Thank you. You're so welcome. I'm glad you had that experience. That's great. Yeah. It is really cool. I'm going to have to try that the next time I have a cram. My <laughs> cram. <laughs> I'll try not to yell it as my foot's in cram. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are we treating when using rosemary for the brain? You're increasing circulation to the brain. Are sage sacred sage used at different times or are they interchangeable? They're interchangeable. Okay, so let's take a break. Um, we'll come back at 10 after and we'll do inflammation after that. Hey everybody, let's come on back and we are going to do inflammation. So another way of saying inflammation is actually the aging process. You know, when, when there's a lot of inflammation in the body, the body ages at a much more rapid rate. When you're able to calm down or slow down inflammation, the body ages at a much slower rate. So if you just look at it from that point of view, the reduction of inflammation, you know, um, would be tied to like um, sometimes the cosmetic industry or just like, you know, the looks and things like that. But it's not about the looks. It's about what the inflammation is doing to the body. And then um, inflammation, the reduction of inflammation potentially lengthens life. If you go through and you look at what causes a person's life to end, you know, regardless of the condition, regardless of that it was an injury, an accident, uh, a chronic health issue, like I, I think it's 94% of the time it's infl inflammation oriented, you know, so that is the damaging component that inflammation does to the body. And uh, inflammation is also tied to cognitive issues things like Alzheimer's and, and Parkinson's, things like that. So reducing this would also help prevent chronic uh, health issues. So here you can see pain and discomfort, swelling and redness, heat and warmth, impaired function. Um, you see this a lot in the joints or in the organs. Um, the thing with, with inflammation, it's also very, very fatiguing very fatiguing and if you have inflammation like say in a hip at some point if it's not addressed it can become systemic where that inflammatory material just kind of spreads to the whole body um, and then it uh, you can see increased disease risk mental health effects and so um, all three of these also could be taken internally uh, apparently, I forgot to put the little thing down at the bottom, two to three drops. Uh, black cumin, frankincense, turmeric are all really solid for helping to generally reduce inflammation. Now, there's times where you go through and you treat something specific, like, um, you know, you have a bad hip or a bad knee, but that's more acute. Like here, we're dealing with chronic inflammation. I would say that, you know, Laura was asking if there's ever a thing that is something that should be daily as you get older, you, you know, I would say older being over the age of 35, 
you should start thinking in inflammation. You know, in your 30s, you don't think about it too much. In your 40s, you start thinking about it a little bit more. But as you get older, it is going to improve the quality of your life. It's going to make you feel better. It's going to improve your immune system. Um, it'll affect how you're able to move around and your mental faculties. And so, again, I mean, this is one that I, you know, because of old injuries and things, my I'm always fighting inflammation in the body. And so um, this is one that I do pretty heavy. And so here we're going to do a breathing pattern, but do keep in mind, you can do two or three drops of either one of these internally on a daily basis. And if there's really chronic inflammation, uh, you can even do it twice a day. What's that? Um, alternative blend. Things are more for the acute. Yeah, black seed complex could work. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else that would work. The pain relief, inflammation, or inflammatory, but that that tends to be more for acute conditions rather than chronic, and that starts to go into the realm of like yarrow and German chamomile, and it's not made for long term use. These are for long term use, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so begin with body awareness. You're checking in with your body. And if there's an area in your body where you feel agitation, where there's inflammation, where a body part is compromised, put your awareness on that spot and begin taking long, slow, deep breaths. Which one are we doing? Oh, yeah. You're still on that body part, or if you want, you can move to a different area in your body. And then just be still for a moment. Mm -hmm. 
Just be still. Begin inhaling again. Your awareness is on your lungs. Long, slow, deep breaths with your awareness on your lungs. Your awareness is on your lungs. You're still taking long, slow, deep breaths. And then you're down to your liver. And then move your awareness a little bit more to the midline. You're still off to the right, about two inches from your midline, but below your ribs.
Your awareness is on the kidneys. And then over to the left-hand side, below your ribs, the spleen area. Your awareness is on the spleen area. Your awareness is on the spine. You're checking in with different areas of your spine. You don't have a spot that jumps out. Do your whole spine. I usually visit the whole spine, but section by section. Maybe let's just do that. Focus on the bones in your neck, the cervical spine. The bones between your shoulder blades, the upper back area. The mid-back area, 
the mid spine. In the lower back, the low spine, the lumbar area. Now move your awareness to your brain. Check in with your brain. If there's a spot that jumps out, treat that. If not, just do your whole brain. Just pause and let go. Notice how your body feels. Notice your emotions, your mind.
Just be still. Notice how you feel. Does your body feel more relaxed? Or do you know? And how about you? So here's the interesting thing. So I asked the people here, like we went through and did this. I was like, how does this make you feel? One had fallen asleep and the other one said, like, I'm feeling very, very sleepy. So that that shows that sometimes what we call anxiety is actually inflammation. Right? It's it's overstimulating neurological processes that produce an anxiety response. So sometimes you're like, I'm having a hard time falling asleep. Really what you could be saying is my body's very inflamed. Like I'm inflamed. And so uh, inflammation equals agitation in the body. So as you go through and you do this, you're like, whoa, this is kind of relaxing. It's because it's reducing that agitation in the body. Very interesting. Huh? You, we think like the logical mind sees things like in compartments. They don't see like the, the cause and effect that it does through the body. And you could say like sometimes when you're going through and treating something, um, it's like setting up a shot on the pool table. Like it's not just doing one thing. You're 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 having to take in all these other factors, and there are a lot of different reasons why anxiety can happen. But you know, we always think of it as a psychological thing, but a lot of times it's physiological. Okay, let's do this again. Check in with your body. Where do you feel inflammation in your body? Agitation. Where do you have a compromised part of your body? Whatever that is. You know, as a, as an, uh, like an osteopath, for example, would go through and like touch different parts of your body and they're just looking for heat, right? And when they feel the heat, they're like, that area is inflamed. That area is compromised. We need to go through and address this. Usually you're aware of the areas that are inflamed, but you wouldn't call them inflamed. You were just like, ah, oh, that area hurts. That that area, mm, fill in the blank, right? It's It's uncomfortable. It's agitated. It's not as strong. Another way of saying that most times is that it's inflamed sometimes, if not all the time right so again body awareness whatever area of your body you like kind of bothers you put your attention on it and inhale if you have a bad neck do your neck you know if it's like sometimes the back of my neck bothers me a little bit go for it Long, slow, deep breaths.
And then just pause for a moment. Check in with your body. Where do you feel it? How's that feeling on your, on your neck? Another one is like this area where the shoulder and the neck kind of meet. You know, we feel it like up in the neck, we'll feel it up in the head, but a lot of times the the culprit is like that little sore spot, like right where the shoulder and neck meet. Put your awareness, on, let's just try. Put your awareness on that area of your neck and shoulder, like this area right in here on both sides. And let's just see what happens. Let's do another experiment. Do your gums and the roof of your mouth. Just your inhaling with your awareness on the gums and the roof of your mouth. And then just pause and be still. How does that feel? Like you did your gums, your mouth, your, your roof of your mouth. Let's do your feet, especially the heels. Put your awareness on the heels of your feet and just do some long, slow, deep breaths.
and then just pause and let go. You notice how you feel, your body, your emotions, your mind. Begin inhaling again. Your awareness is on your lungs. Move your awareness to the liver. the gallbladder so move your awareness a bit more to the midline slightly off to the right about two inches below your ribs The kidneys. Your awareness is on your kidneys.
over to the spleen on the left hand side below your ribs. And do your whole spine. Your awareness is on your spine. Check in with all the areas of your spine as you inhale. And then your awareness is on your brain.
and then just pause and be still. Let it incubate, let it soak into the body. Let your body process this. <laughs> so you notice your body you notice your mind your your thoughts i mean who would have thought that treating inflammation is soothing to the emotions soothing to the mind but it also helps the mind to function better helps your cognitive processes. You know, back when um, I was doing therapy all the time, we I, I'd be treating conditions that were chronic conditions and they were incredibly uh, they were conditions that sometimes had just an incredible amount of inflammation. Right. And, you know, I kind of coined this term, you know, I was talking this out with some of my physician friends and um, I coined this term as transient dementia. And what would happen is in these chronic conditions, when there would be just this like inflammatory crisis, the person would have dementia. Like, I mean, they just, they had all the signs of symptoms of dementia when i would reduce the inflammation all of a sudden the dementia would go away and so i'm not saying all forms of dementia are that way but a lot of dementia is tied to an inflammatory response and so anyway just food for thought i guess but let's go ahead and open it up. Um, you can unmute yourself, type in, share your experiences about this process or questions. Um, just really quick for the last process, actually, I missed this one. Or maybe this was the beginning of this one. Sorry, I'm a little spacey right now. It's this one. Is there a benefit of taking two different oils in a day? Like one in the AM, one in the PM for inflammation. I mean, you can mix them up. You don't necessarily have to do them AM, PM. But I would just, whatever it is, I would do it consistent. Black cumin is a go-to one. Um, frankincense can can do it. Frankincense is interesting because it helps to treat the like the precursors to, that turn into the inflammation or the inflammatory material. And then turmeric really good for inflammation in the body. And all of these, um, you could say, have an impact on brain function. A lot of times people don't put it together that it's tied to their anti-inflammatory properties, but like turmeric is something you would use to improve certain cognitive issues or prevention of um, serious like neurological conditions up in the brain. And it's because of its reduction of inflammation in the body. Um, this was during the process. I'm feeling relaxed and calm, but not sleepy. Very nice. Yeah, good. Yeah. I, I mean, like I said, this is some forms of anxiety is inflammation. Go ahead, Sonia. Hey, Sonia. Okay. For the oils for this one, or can you use uh, ginger? Uh, you could use ginger, like ginger, I would use to augment some of these. I would go a little bit harder with like the black cumin or the turmeric. Gin ginger's in the mix, but um, 
I find that these provide a little bit of a stronger response. You know, if you didn't have these, ginger would be fine. Yeah. I, I like ginger more for like inflammation in the gut and sometimes uh, in combination with some other things for things in the joint, uh, but definitely for the gut. Question, is black seed complex a stronger version of black cumin? Um, it's got all three of these in there with a couple other things. So it's just, I, I don't know if it's a stronger version, but it's like a broader spectrum, you could say. Whenever we go to the gallbladder with this oil, I get major gallbladder burps. I have had gallbladder issues several years ago and cleared it up with liver and gallbladder cleanses. Any comments on the belching inflammation still, perhaps? Um, there still could be a little bit of an issue there. Um, the belching, yeah. Um, sometimes it's when the solar plexus is a, a bit like con congested and that would still be tied to some gallbladder function. But I would, I would, you know, even though you've resolved some of it, I would still treat the gallbladder a little bit, even if it's just inhalation with this directly. What is the difference in treating inflammation with oils versus liquid fish oil with D3? Um, I, I, I think that can be helpful. Um, I find the oils are a bit more potent when it comes to that. Uh, the fish oils tend to do more of the precursor work, like, you know, um, things turning into inflammation. And so not quite the same, even though we're talking about inflammation, it's at like different phases or different stages. So, Are these same oils in the Inflamend blend? No, Inflamend's a little bit more for, uh, well... It's, it has some of these, but um, it's also got like German chamomile, yarrow, things like that, myrrh. And so it's more for ac acute conditions, like if you're treating a joint or a back or something like that, where it's super inflamed. These are more general, general ways of treating inflammation in the body. Mm, so relaxed. <laughs> My twitchy fingers stopped twitching. Oh, uh, it was, oh, you okay? <laughs> uh, so that's interesting. Your your twitching stopped. Yeah. 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 The um, some sometimes she brings up a good point like so she has a finger that will start to kind of quiver i get that like in different areas of my body and um you know the old school way of saying that is fi fibrillations and um when we hear fibrillations a lot of times we think of the heart but they can happen anywhere in the body and it's just like a really superficial like flutter or twitch in the in the tissue or it might be like for Samantha she has like a finger that will start to like quiver and um inflammation causes like a disorganizing or like a kind of a chaotic response in the sensory nerves and so if it's left there for a period of time, it will disrupt like proper function in an area, but you'll see it sometimes as like quivers in the body. So you're wanting to reduce inflammation for that. We actually have that blend, what is it, nerve help. Yeah, it's nerve help. And that is totally to treat uh, uh, fibrillations. And ironically, like regardless of where you put it on the body, it helps with inflammations in the neck and in the mouth. And it's just because of what the blend does. But yeah. So, okay. So um, before, I mean, we could just jump right into another one, but let's just go ahead and break for lunch. 
And so we'll do an hour and a half lunch. It's about 2.15. Um, 1.45, we'll do 1.45. Hey everybody, let's go ahead and come on back. We're at the top of page seven and we're on number four, the gut. Basically poor digestion. And this isn't going to be necessarily something that you go through and address all the different kind of issues that would um, impact digestive function and the gut. This is just general treatment of the gut. And, you know, the the gut is really heavily impacted by uh, stress. It's heavily impacted by stress. It is also heavily impacted by um, breathing function. Um, I mean, we can go on and on about it, but um, when it's not doing well, there's digestive discomfort, there's weight changes. But there's also reduction in um, absorption of nutrients. Um, your energy levels feel low. Like uh, Samantha and I started doing this thing to where like every day, regardless of what we're doing, we try to have like a big salad for one of our meals. And, um, you know, at, at first it was like, oh, this would just be like curious. You know, we'd eat salads, but not every day. And um, we started noticing, you know, that... Uh, energy levels both went up, the body felt better, cognitive function went up. And it's just because you're, you're eating those greens, but it's also what it's doing to the digestive tract. So energy levels um, improved, uh, skin, like didn't really have big issues with the skin, but I noticed like my skin looks better. Um, and by going through and treating the gut, as always, you're treating your immune system. If you have poor gut, poor digestive health, you're more prone to get sick. It doesn't mean that it's a horrible thing. It's just you're more prone to be, to get sick. And with a lot of these things, you're noticing a pattern of, there's a potential for a lot of these things that we're treating for mood disturbances. And so there's a reason why these are like go-to things to make sure these things are in place um, by going through and treating this. And so Sonia was asking earlier, what about ginger for general inflammation? Um, it's good, but ginger is really good for digestive health. It's good for reducing inflammation in the digestive system. And it's like a general stimulant, a better function overall to the digestive tract. So ginger is really something significant to use for um, uh, everyday kind of applications for digestive issues. Now, if you don't have like digestive disturbances that you need to treat this every day, eh, you know, maybe not necessary, but anytime where there's an immune related issue or or you have one of the issues that is listed here, or you just have like poor digestion, things of this nature, this could be definitely an everyday thing. So going back to what Laura was asking about, if it's something good to do every day, you know, the things we've done this part up to this part, I would say like, no matter what, those things are good to do every day. This one, I would say, eh, if you have the issue, if you don't have the issue, do it from time to time, but it doesn't need to be a daily thing. Okay, so anise is good, bacopa is good, rosemary, verbena, and tarragon. Anise support is literally made for, for this as well, but um, ginger's a big standout here. I mean, they're all, everything here is an A-plus choice, so there's no going wrong here. So with that, whatever oil that you have that you're using, Let's pull that out. And we're doing abdominal awareness. So if you don't have an area in your abdominal cavity, you know, some, some organ or something that's malfunctioning, you can do the whole abdominal cavity. But if you have an area where it feels discomfort, a little bloating, 
little tension, especially after you eat, you know, something like that, explore your abdominal cavity and just see what you feel in this area. Whatever you feel, your awareness is on that spot and you're taking long, slow, deep breaths. Johnny, you guys use it. A couple. Long, slow, deep breath. Your awareness is on your abdomen. Just somewhere in your abdominal cavity. Explore the area and inhale. And then just pause and be still. And same area, abdominal area, explore the whole cavity. And just be still. Just be still, be aware.
Now let's explore your spine. Feel your spine, especially that mid-back area, but the whole spine. Check in with the whole spine. Move your awareness to the front solar plexus, the area below your ribs, on your upper abdomen. I'm glad you got that. <laughs> Your awareness is on the front solar plexus. You're taking nice, long, slow, deep breaths. Move your awareness to the back solar plexus. Your mid back area, you're taking nice, long, slow, deep breaths. And then your navel, your awareness is on your navel.
and then the bottom of your tailbone. And then be still. Again, check in with the abdominal cavity, your whole entire digestive tract. Where do you feel something? Where do you notice it? You're observing your digestive area and you're inhaling, taking nice, long, slow, deep breaths. And then just pause and be still. What do you notice? Some people, sometimes with even just doing a very general treatment like this in the gut, will notice that their back loosens up or back pain actually will reduce. Some back pain is abdominal muscles or things going on with the internal organs. So again, back to your abdominal area. You're practicing abdominal awareness. You're going deep and feeling what you feel in the internal organs.
and then just let it go. Check in with your spine. What do you feel with your spine? Move your awareness to the front solar plexus.
You're taking nice, long, slow, deep breaths with your awareness on the front solar plexus. The back solar plexus, the mid back area. The navel. The bottom of your tailbone. You're taking long, slow, deep breaths with your awareness on the bottom of your tailbone.
Just pause and let go. <clears throat> what did you notice? Right. Yeah. And now by that. Like you can actually feel it. Mm. So let's go ahead and share experiences and ask questions. Samantha said, like, now she's much more aware of her gut and you, know, you just ate. So, you know, you're stimulating digestive processes. And then somebody else here, uh, uh, Cindy said that um, she noticed it in her back. Uh, I'm I'm usually I'm with Cindy. Like when I do the digestive work, I always like go, my back feels way better. Like, oh, whoa, what's the deal? But um, sometimes you'll just feel more relaxed. And another thing that happens for me is I feel like somebody used this word earlier on, like fortified. Like I feel like stronger. Like I can I can take on the day. Um, uh, but, you know, people are going to have different experiences here. So go ahead and unmute yourself and type in and let's go ahead and share. Go ahead, Ann, then Robert. Hey, Ann. I, long time ago, months ago, I was having back problems and you said use the margarine. And I'm wondering, is shall I continue with that or should I go with? one of the others, ginger, arcoba, argon? Um, so the marjoram can be put directly on the the, um, the back area. That's but what like, I was doing. Yeah. So does your pain run side to side or yes. up and down? It does run side. So oh. that's actually still not a digestive issue, but it is sometimes... Um, the stomach muscles, like, you know, the skeletal muscle. So what you could do is you could put the marjoram still on your back, you know, because there is a spasm there, but put it also on the abdomen, um, especially up high. And then as you go down the center, down by the belly button, even a little bit lower and see how that treats you. But a lot of times that will help to reduce the, the tension in the gut. Like I do this thing like... Um, uh it's it's just this weird thing that i do like i, I take like <laughs> like lan lanolin you know which is really thick and sticky okay and i'll 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 put a big glob of it on my thumb and then i start like right above my ribs and then i just take my thumb and i slowly go down just trying to hit the abdominal muscles and i kind of wait to find places where it kind of burns really bad and you know, it's whenever you're hitting the burning sensation, you're hitting like trigger points or fascial lesions. And it's kind of uncomfortable for about like 15 or 20 seconds. And then the burning kind of stops. And then I'll go down a little bit further. And I'm always just working to about the belly button. And then I hit another spot. And um, I got to say that makes my back feel amazing and it's treating the stomach muscles and for me like when i broke my back i um twisted really hard like i actually broke it in the air mm. being launched off a, a bike and so <laughs> I, I twisted really hard and in that twisting is when the the break the the breaking of the bones happened but it it ripped and caused like these lesions in my abdomen and um whenever i go through and treat that my back feels amazing you know, not even on the back, but I still put marjoram on my back just to calm it down at the end of the day. But you could try instead of doing that weird thing, you can just put some marjoram on the gut and see how that feels. Um, usually after I do that thing with the lenolin, that's why I follow it up with marjoram. And oh, I mean, it feels amazing <laughs> for, my, for my back. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's a lot of times where we feel pain is not where the problem's at. So <laughs> you just kind of start treating things in that area because the pain will radiate. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. You're so welcome. And go ahead, Robert. Hey, Robert. Hey, Greg. Uh, so the one question on this section is, can we take this internally for this yes. purpose? Yeah. Okay, yeah. All of these? Um, yes, everything. All of it's a, a, a thumbs up. 
Great. Thank you much. Hey, and this is your, your thing you suggested. It uh, is. I'm liking it. <laughs> Good. I, I have lots of questions for Tuesday already. Yeah. And, you, you know, we were talking on break. I was like, there might be an essentials too. Like we, we could do another round of this very easily. I, it, it has uh, an interesting draw because it's really straightforward. Yeah. And then Not a lot way, of interpretation. Yeah. No. And that, that's what makes it easy. Yeah. And then there's other questions that come out of it, which I'll ask on Tuesday. And it's not so much about treating a particular condition. You're just improving different like functions in the body. And, you know, the idea being that if you improve the function of the body, the body can heal itself. Right. So you're just hitting these systems of like, ah, these are issues that will slow down the rate of healing. So let's just address them. And for some of us, you know, like me mental stress for me is one of the big ones. Like I just, ugh, you know, it's probably the dyslexia, but if like, if I don't treat it kind of often, my brain goes a little wonky. And yeah, so and I just, I just always treat it. But for somebody like you, you might not have that issue. And so you're like, yeah, that, that one's kind of interesting, but not really a thing. So we each have our like areas where like, oh, I really need to pay attention to this. Yeah, like you were saying, there's there's a lot of people who have, they're, they're just, they know they're not feeling right, but they right. can't put their finger on it. Yeah. And so you could easily go through all of these yeah. step by step, and eventually yeah. it, it will unwind most things. And it's almost a way of diagnosing, like, you know, or evaluating, I guess you don't want to use the word diagnose, but... Like um, sometimes when like maybe, you know, I've been pushing and like, I'm like, oh, I just feel off. I'll go, okay, a little lemongrass. What does that make me feel? A little basil. What does that make me feel? A little ginger. What does that make me feel? And then I'll hit one where I like go, ooh, I feel better. That's my issue. And then, then I right. treat it. Right. And yeah. you don't actually have to know where the problem is you simply no. have to know it's that's the system and then you just yep. do all the stuff related to that system yeah yeah okay cool it's really like when i was doing healings all the time this was literally my checklist like the check was a little bit longer but not massively like i would go through and like what about autonomic function what about digestive issue what about the breath what about and i would just start going down the thing and then i would address their issue Okay. You know, there's that, that lady um, that you brought on that um, I treated where her, she had, she woke up and one day her, her, I think it was her right eye. Yeah. Her daughter. Couldn't see out of, couldn't see out of it anymore. Yes. And so I was like, okay, I'll treat the eye, but I got to clean up stress, you know, because she's a teacher. She's, she's, in, you know, does something with the union. She's under a lot of stress. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll clean up the mental stress for a bit. And then I'll treat the eye. And when I got done with mental stress, I was like, I still had 45 minutes and because um, we booked like a double session. And I was like, okay, so here we go. How are you feeling? And she goes, it's like 95% better. And I was like, wait, what? Like I hadn't treated the eye. I had just treated mental stress. Yeah. Was, like it was, it was no big, like, oh, I figured something out. I just cleared stress off of her body. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. This is great. Uh, and I look forward to using it with a couple clients soon. Yeah, good, good. And I'll get to the shares and questions here in the chat in a second, but um, good point. Um, taking oils internal because we have some new students. Yeah. So you want to make sure that they're gen genuine oils. If you do take them internal, if you're not sure, just do inhalation or topical. Um, gen genuine oils, like, um, usually you're going to get them from a smaller company. Um, you know, there's a couple of MLMs that, that do, do it as well, but like things from the health food store, even though it says hundred percent pure, hundred percent pure on the American market only has to be 5% genuine. Like it's kind of a throwaway term. And so you want to make sure that the oils are, uh, uh, genuine and not adulterated, not manipulated, folded, you know, whatever. There's lots of different ways that people manipulate the oils. And so um, 
you know, like here, if we, if we have doubt about a particular oil, I send it up to a lab up in Canada and um, it takes about two weeks and um, they go through and evaluate it. And if it's not genuine, it goes back to whoever sent it to me. And so, um, you know, I haven't had to do that too many times, but sometimes with a new distiller or something, especially out of certain areas in the world, the tendency is adulteration is very high potential. So usually from those areas, I send things off to get them evaluated. So, or I hire somebody who will do that for me. So, yeah. yeah. Someone shared, my low back has loosened. My solar plexus has calmed down a lot. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Like a lot of times we think our, our emotions or our mind are something that we're thinking and it's really something that the body is doing it's a lot of times not psychological it's it's physiological and it doesn't mean that it can't produce an emotional or mental response but if you kind of clean up the body even psychological things become much easier to treat i mean think of the thing with anxiety when we went through and did the inflammation basically you're feeling anxious because your body is telling you something is wrong, something's off. You have a lot of inflammation in your body. Pay attention, red alert, whatever it is. And so that manifests as anxiety. But really what's happening is the body's inflamed. Yeah. With each sequence we're done, we've done today, regardless of the oil used, I always have a nice juicy mouth evidence of lymphatic increased mobility yeah i would say so yeah my low back pain is still and my abdominal tightness yeah that still could be muscular here we're treating the internal organs but um you know the internal organs have fascia that wrap around it but um you know, we're not really targeting like a particular issue, like like back pain or something like this. We're just looking at trying to strengthen certain processes in the body. So, I mean, I would still do this, but then I would still treat the abdomen and the back with the appropriate oils. Hey, Greg, it's me. It's Tracy. Um, mm -hmm. I'm getting ready to do a cleanse. I think the body just is... A lot of stuff that needs to come out of it. Um, well, it and could I, be your body resisting the cleanse. Like, I don't want to. I'm, I'm not going to do a cleanse. You do a cleanse. I'm not doing a cleanse. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, but I like food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you drink carrot juice. I'm not drinking carrot juice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, did, I did use uh, rosemary verbena in that time, and I thought I would go get some ginger and just see if that. Uh, Ginger is a pretty solid choice for this. You know, and, and a support, um, I like, like they're, even though we're using them in this protocol, they do some different things. You know, the ANS support kind of stimulates the function of the, of the nerves that innervate the, the gut and they help regenerate a stress plagued digestive tract. Ginger just kind of stimulates digestive function. It regulates a bunch of things and it does reduce inflammation in the gut itself. And so um, I, I have both. Like when I travel, like I, I, I don't use them a lot, but when I do, you're, I, I, you're I'll go like freezing up. So I'm not oh, hearing you. Am I really? Oh, is it better now? Um, yeah, I can hear you now. <laughs> okay. So a lot of times I'll use the ANS to, to like just strengthen the nerves of the gut, but I still use ginger to reduce inflammation and just strengthen the digestive process. If you Would have you do poor, this protocol? Yeah, you can do this protocol, but I also take them internally. Yeah. Okay. Both yeah. of them, but separate. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. I do You're have so some welcome. stress. I'm married after all to a CEO. Right. <laughs> Thanks. Feel relaxed, kind of like a happy baby that wants to play with its seer. 
Feet. Thank you. <laughs> Next. That makes sense. That's cute. <laughs> Okay, so here we're going to look at um, how your body processes pain and the dysfunction that it can cause because of being in pain. Now, again, this is not specific to a particular area. It's not about like we're going to target back pain or shoulder pain. We're looking at the effects of pain um, on the body, especially chronic pain. So that usually uh, starts to produce persistent discomfort. Pain is very fatiguing, very, very fatiguing. If you've ever had uh, some serious pain for any length of time, it just gets to where even midday at the end of the day, you are just exhausted, right? One of the things that happens within about 30 days is it starts to produce uh, sleep disturbances. You know, your, your muscles um, tend to be stiff. And the stiffness is due to your body tightens up to protect you from moving to produce more pain stimuli. So your body starts to get kind of rigid, actually. And then, um, you, you know, when you start to be in like long term pain, your body's ability to like function, you know, you even if you're not feeling it with a movement, you're like, yeah, but if I move enough, it's going to cause me to to feel it. So your body is just like, don't do it. Like, don't do it. You know, I have this example of, um, it, it's, it's kind of comical because it's an animal, but it's, it's a physiological response. We do it as people, right? Like I knew this lady that she, she kind of fell, like she was trying to get on her bike and kind of fell sideways and injured her shoulder which is understandable. It's a, it was a painful injury and everything. But um, like from that, she would never ride a bike again. Like, you know, there was a bunch of things that she wouldn't do. And she was always like not moving that arm because she didn't want to injure it. And I go, do you, you know, I asked her, do you have range of motion? She showed me a range of motion. It was normal. And I was like, does it hurt when it moves? And she was like, no. And I was like, why do you do that? And she goes, I might hurt it. Like, you, you know, so the pain was gone, but she didn't want to uh, do it again. And so, you know, back when I lived in Santa Fe, I had alpacas and um, one of the alpacas, you know, when it snowed, he, he was walking and he slipped in the snow and he hurt his back leg, you know, so I did a little bit of work on him and I got it better and everything. And he would be fine like if he was walking in wintertime it didn't i mean summertime it didn't matter but in the winter time if he was walking in the field and there was no snow he would walk normal but when he hurt his leg he kind of like spread his hind legs out and he he looked like a baby walking with poopy diapers mm -hmm. like it was just like he was really weird and like it just looked like he had a diaper full of something and he was trying to walk and his legs were really far apart. And, um, you know, because he's not wanting to slip. And so in the in the wintertime, there would be patches of snow on the ground. And if he was walking where there was no snow, he would walk normal. As soon as he would get to the snow, those legs would go out and he'd start walking with that look of the poopy diapers. And then when he got to the other side, he'd walk normal. And if there was snow on the ground, he just walked that way all the time. And this was years later, by the way. But again, how you process pain and how your brain processes it is also like, I don't want to experience that again. And, you know, the animal didn't want to experience it. The lady with the shoulder didn't want to do it. It's usually not a lot of conscious thinking. It's sometimes it's pre-conscious. Sometimes it is. They just make a choice. But your body tries to protect itself in ways that also don't make you feel good. They're trying to prevent something bigger, but in doing that, they cause smaller problems. And so this helps to unwind this particular uh, component. Um, then you have the psychological effects of chronic pain, emotional distress, anxiety, reduced quality of life. Pain will start to impact cognitive functions, 
and um you know you start like avoiding certain situations or certain interactions because of the pain and you'll start to feel a bit um, isolated and so with this our go-to thing i mean there's this is amazing is galbanum you just um galbanum is in the frankincense family it's super super helpful for pain processing and for those of you that did the lymphatic five like a weekend or two ago you know we had several aspects of the of the pain mechanisms but you can see that galbanum was a big piece of a certain aspect right so let's have you pull out your galbanum And I would say a few drops on your wrist, a couple drops in water. Anytime somebody has a pain syndrome, this is usually one of the things I have them do regardless. And now do body awareness. Your awareness is on your body. Just wherever you feel something in your body, you're putting your awareness there. You're taking nice, long, slow, deep breaths. Stream now. Oh. Samantha, I just asked Samantha how oh, I was treating her. She's like, I'm already happier. <laughs> like she was happy before, but apparently now she's more happy. How about you? Yeah. 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 yeah you're grinning actually. So here's the thing like you're still in, inhaling on your body. Galvanum works for physical pain, galvanum also works for psychological pain. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> I know. I know it has a little bit of an odd scent to it. Like I always refer to it as frankincense's weird cousin. But after you get used to it, it has an impact on expans expansion of consciousness and awareness. And, um, I find it interesting in the Kabbalistic tradition, the Jewish and Hebrew traditions, they they use it in a lot of anointing oils. Um, it's used in a lot of different traditions, by the way. But in the, the Hebrew tradition, they say, if you take two or three drops, or you know, if you basically ingest galbanum on a daily basis, it reduces your tendency to sin which I find really kind of amazing. And if you think about how we try to manage pain, how we make adjustments for pain, be it physical or psychological, you know, if you reduce pain, it changes your perspective, it changes your behaviors. In Buddhism, the Four Noble Truths, the very first thing is in life there's suffering. Basically they say in life there's pain. Like pain is a doorway that you have to kind of like the regulation of your response to pain opens up the door to the intuitive mind. 
Like if, if you're not good at handling pain, it's hard to walk through that door. It really is. Okay, hey, pause and let go. So Laura was asking, is there is there ones that we should do every day? If you have any sort of pain, I would say do this. But honestly, even if you didn't have pain, I would do this on a regular basis just for spiritual growth and development. <laughs> That's funny. now your awareness is on your spine evaluate your spine find a spot that stands out to you or just do your whole spine Move to your brain. Where do you feel it in your brain? And then move to an area of discomfort. Even if it's not hurting right now, still go to that area. <laughs> we'll we'll visit a couple areas. <laughs> Thank uh -huh. 
And then just be still, just be still. Again, practice body awareness. Where do you feel something in your body? Does not have to be one of your areas that are compromised. It could just be anywhere in your body. You're practicing awareness on your body. Just pause and be still. Your awareness is on your spine. You're taking nice, long, slow, deep breaths.
Your awareness is on your brain. And then let's just take a break for a moment. We're going to visit a couple of your different spots that are compromised, not just one. How's that? So just give yourself a moment, let it incubate. Now go to an area of discomfort in your body. Your awareness is there. You're taking nice, long, slow, deep breaths. and move to another area where you feel compromised in your body. If you don't have another area, then just, you can stay on that spot. Now let's do this. Think of something that bothers you, but psychologically, emotions, your mind, 
some friend or relative that is a little little too much some situation maybe at work or wherever just something that you feel Whatever it is, pay attention to it and just whatever thoughts arise, even if it's negative self-thinking, you know, that voice in your head, pay attention to it and inhale the galvanum. You're inhaling. And then just be still. Notice how you feel. Notice your body, your mind, your emotions. Notice your thoughts, your inner dialogue. What do you notice? Let's go ahead and unmute ourselves and or type in. Share your experiences or ask questions. Go ahead and fire away. Greg, this is Laura. Hey, Laura. Um, I have a question. Um, yes. My, um, I have a friend that's having neck surgery on um, Tuesday. In a in a situation like that, is galbanin the most appropriate thing to 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 help support that person? Yeah, I I would do galbanum, and I'd also do like black cumin or turmeric. Um, I usually go get a uh, black cumin after that, but she's so close to the surgery that I would wait till after the fact. You know, okay. like sometimes it, like if if it was a month from now, I'd say start taking the galvanum and the black cumin, you know, preparing the body for the pain, like lowering some of the issues. And then about 48 hours or so, um, you can stop and then as soon as you're out of surgery like the next day like i just pick right back up and and go from there and so um 
Yeah, like th that would work very, very easily. Sometimes you... I, I put them on myrrh instead of galbanum, but like 80% of the time I do galbanum. And and you um, two to three drops internally? If she's up to doing internal, you can do internal. Um, people tend to like to do internal over putting a few drops on the wrist just because of, you know, it's a little bit of an odd smell. Um or they can do an inhalation, but I, I like to either get it on the skin or internal on top of inhaling. Usually resolves pain quite substantially. Okay. And yeah. you two to three drops or more than that? No, two or three drops is fine. I mean, in really severe cases, I, I'll bump it up to like five, but and, um, usually, usually two or three is plenty. And one time a day or twice or what? You could do twice, but usually a person finds enough comfort with once a once a day. Like maybe the first week out of, well, I say the first week, you know, the thing with surgeries is usually the second week is harder than the first week. Um, the second week she could do twice a day quite easily. Um, you know, and you could put more on the skin that you wanted, but like I keep internal to about two or three drops, no more than twice a day. Um, but she could dump 10, 12 drops on her wrist and just rub it together. It would help substantially. Thank you very much. You're so welcome. Someone said they got an important insight. Oh, good. Yeah. Everybody else said, now I'm going to knock me out. <laughs> First, I felt tremendous sadness around time gone by, and then it flipped to the opposite. The very best time of my life coming up. Oh, I good. noticed being surprised at this contrast. Good, good, good. When applying topically, do we need a carrier oil? Not really. Um, unless you're super, super sensitive, um, usually I just have them put a few drops on their wrist. Drop the bottle. Yeah. Yeah. It was very interesting when Greg asked us to think about some person. As I was inhaling and thinking of the person, I felt like a cord was going out of my navel, but it was a cord that was inside my organs mm. all the way to the brain. This exercise made me realize as is the person, as is the person wanted me to think and act like her. I feel peace now. Oh, good. Slightly off topic, perhaps, but inspired by the remarks on galvanum. If there is to be a future essentials class, might it be a spiritual essentials to prevent key protocols with oils yeah. about spiritual development? Well, you know, on break, I started thinking, you know, we could still do another physical one. We could do a psychological one, and then we could do an esoteric one. So my brain went to like, I think there's going to be a series of these maybe till the end of the year or something. Yeah, I, but I agree with you. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> awesome. I like that answer. <laughs> yeah, because like, um, like here you can see that like mood plays a role, but mood would eventually turn into uh, thinking and and. Um, there's just some really nuts and bolts things that you can do for psychological well-being. Not so much like treating like, oh, we're going to target trauma, but just like sense of well-being. Just I want to feel good. I want to feel good every day. I want to be able to shut off stress or whatever. Go with the flow of things. And then esoterically, there's definitely... Um, Yeah, that can open up all kind of worms, but like in a good way. 
there's just certain mechanics that has to do with your physiology that's tied to even the connection to the the heart and the mind or the heart and the crown you know it's not just the mixing of things emotionally but it's tied to uh, your vagus nerve and certain pathways that have to open up for the energy to move and so you know you put your awareness on your heart long enough eventually it moves up to the crown but for different people it's going to go at different rates because of certain channels being open and um then there's the whole esoteric component of of like the quality of the nerves or the nerve fluid in in your in your body and you know, we address that a bit, but sometimes I don't talk about some of that language just because it makes it confusing to the topic or the presentation. But, you know, I think we've been doing long enough to where uh, we can throw out some of these um, super abstract ideas and have them you know, be processed. It's even the idea of what we're doing with the master healing. What do we call the Wednesday night thing? Master healing techniques or, yeah. Where we're talking like kind of theory and doing a little bit of um, experiment. It's going to open up the potential of talking about esoteric principles that are not like in new age circles. They're very old principles that... Mm -hmm. have to do with mystical side of practices and we've been prepping for it for a while but there's another layer that i think we're going to start tapping into so yeah anyway it's not that your brain has to process it a lot of times you just need to experience it or just know that like when you work these channels this is what happens and there's still a nuts and bolts to to it all, but it's the logical mind thinks it needs to make something happen. The intuitive mind just thinks that it has to put itself in alignment and it happens. And so it's just slowly being able to embrace both, not just one or the other. So anyway, enough of that talk. <laughs> I love talking about that stuff, but I don't want to make it too confusing today. So let's, is more? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So to clarify, someone's asking three drops on the wrist um, and inhale or just put the oil on the wrist? You can just put it on the wrist, but if you do it on the wrist um, and inhale, it makes it more potent. On the wrist, you can you can do much more if you want to do more than three drops, but internally, just two or three drops at a time. I mean, when I put it on my wrist, I do about eight drops, rub it together, and call it good. Inhale a little bit, um, good to go. So, yes, feel a very powerful connection to this plant. Feel like mm -hmm. I'd love to grow it in my garden. Mm -hmm. Excited about the esoteric as well as the physical. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So we'll come back on the half hour. So 15 minute break. And we're going to come back and do a uh, mugwort. Like somebody was asking earlier about mugwort. Going to be hitting it right after the break. Hey, everybody. We are at the top of page 11 and we are doing the mugwort technique. So in a way, you know, uh, everything that we've been doing was more of like a clinical thing. This has some clinical applications, but it's more uh, from like Chinese medicine or from the, the circle of working with the energetics. And basically this is tied to opening up the meridians. But by doing this, you start to restore balance in the body, you, you strengthen organ function, especially in the stomach itself. And in Chinese medicine, this has a big impact on the overall vitality of the whole 
uh, body. You're opening up flow of the arms and legs, um, which allows you to process information from the environment at a much higher rate. Um, promotes uh, physical and emotional well-being. And more than anything, this last piece is it, 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 improves, it improves the efficiency of anything else that you're doing. Like, so if you go, oh, I'm treating the gut, you do this, it improves it. Oh, I'm dealing with pain, you do this, it improves it. Whatever you're doing, it improves it. I'm treating, you know, a pain syndrome. I'm treating a headache. I'm treating, you know, digestive issues. I'm treating a urinary tract infection. I'm treating poor immunity or poor lymphatic flow, whatever it is. Um, I go through phases where I do this every day. Like I inhale and I actually dab it on these joints. Um, and then I'll go a while without doing it. And then I do it again. And I'm like, ah, why did I stop? But, you know, that's the nature of things. So you're going to pull out your Artemisia, which is a type of mugwort that's from Nepal, or bugwort, which is from Morocco. Same plant, different regions. Or your Mugwort Supreme, that is the combination of both of those. If you want, dab it on these joints, your armpits, your elbows, your wrists, your palms, your hips, the knees, the ankles, the soles. And then if you have an area in your body where there's discomfort, you can put it on there as well. I like to also put it on my shins, like the shin, you know, the outer part of the lower leg, you know, outside the bone. <laughs> Not funny. Okay, and then begin inhaling. Your awareness is on your armpits. The meridians are just energy channels that run from the bottom of your body up to the top of your body. Each one passes through an organ. So that channel impacts the particular organ that you're, you're treating. By opening up the arms and legs, you're opening up all the primary meridians. Your elbows, your awareness is on your elbows, especially the inner elbow where the crease is, but you can do your whole elbow.
your wrists, your awareness is on your wrists. and your palms. Your awareness is on your palms. Did I skip the wrist? No, I didn't. Move your awareness to the hips, the sides of your hips. Your knees, I do the front and back of the knees. How's that feeling? How's that feeling? How's that feeling? <laughs> I asked the people here, I got a don't bother me, and Samantha's eyes are starting to work independently of each other. <laughs> then the ankles, especially the front of the ankles, but you can do the whole ankle.
the soles of your feet. Now go to an area of your body where there's discomfort. And now, just let go for a second. Check in with your body. Where do you feel it in your body? Where do you feel anything in your body? Agitation, a blockage, a heaviness, wherever that is, your awareness is on that spot and you're inhaling with your awareness on that spot.
You're inhaling on that part of your body. You're taking nice, long, slow, deep breaths. Just be still. Just be still. Be aware. Just be still. Again, begin inhaling. Your awareness is on your armpits. Long, slow, deep breaths with your awareness on the armpits.
the elbows, your awareness is on your elbows. The wrists, your awareness is on the wrists. Palms of your hands. Long, slow, deep breaths with your awareness on the palms. The hips, your awareness is on your hips. Your knees, the back of your knees. Where's the one? The ankles, your awareness is on the ankles. the soles of your feet.
Now go to an area of discomfort in your body. And body awareness, where do you feel something in your body? Some area that's compromised, an area of discomfort, an area that's in the process of healing. And then pause and let go. Just let it incubate for a moment. Notice how you feel. Notice your body kind of goes into a state of like healing, like deeper levels of relaxation. Energy is moving and circulating in your body. Let's go ahead and share experiences. You can unmute yourself, you can type in, share experience or ask a question. This can be added to any other protocol. This can be a thing that stands on its own. You could do it at night as you're going to bed. You can use it for psychological healing. You could use it for physical healing. It just gets all the energy moving.
Um, let me make sure you guys can unmute. Um, so much you're deeply peaceful with a more inward kind of awareness. Yeah. yeah. Anytime you're opening up meridians, anytime you're opening up or activating the chakra, you're increasing soul contact. That is what's happening. And so soul contact, increased soul contacts accelerates the body's ability to heal. Bottom line. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we're going to do something else that's also relaxing. How about this? We'll take a little break right now. Usually we do two and then we'll jump. Um, we're going to end with just doing one process. Let's take a break now and then we'll do two more and let you just enjoy the mugwort technique. So we'll come back at 25 after. So we're at the top of page 13 and Basically, we're dealing with tight fascia at the base of the skull. Um, fascia is connective tissue. It's not necessarily muscle. It's the connective tissue that wraps around muscle, wraps around groups of muscle fibers, and each individual muscle fiber. So there's this plane of connective tissue that goes from the back of your head, down your neck, into your shoulders, your upper back, and when it's tight, it throws off the nervous system, throws off your breath, cause postural distor uh, distortions, causes headaches, neck, back pain, reduces range of motion. Um, you can see there's nerve compressions it, it contributes to, jaw dysfunction. Um, and it throws off your circulation and movement of lymph. And so um, this is actually a very old school thing um, uh, in osteopathic principles from like the early to mid 1800s. This is one of the go-to things that you check. You know, the two things you check is the nuchal ligament area, which is the base of your skull and the hip socket, you know. But back then, the hip socket was because people were always either riding horses or being thrown from a horse. So you check the hip socket because either, you know, we're riding on a stagecoach with a lot of bumpy stuff that was impacting the hip. You know, the legs are spread quite wide riding a horse or you got thrown from a horse from time to time. But this base of the skull thing... Um, uh, it was back in the old days. I checked this even if I worked on somebody for two years, five years, whatever. Every time they came in, I checked this spot. And so, I mean, every time. And so, um, using oils and things, we've done it in different ways, but it doesn't have to be a daily thing. But I would say if you're having some of these issues like headaches, migraines, upper back pain, respiratory issues, anything like this, I would do it kind of often. And from time to time, um, I would do it as maintenance. I mean, it does unwind things in ways that are hard to explain. Um, somebody's asking, can you use fascial release oil? Um, you, you can, it's, it's not an A choice here, even though it's for fascia here, we're really wanting to, um, relax this area and fascial release is literally about releasing, but there's a lot more about relaxing this area. Um, if you don't have anything else, you can use the fascial release, but the go-to one is vetiver or rouscous. Um, terebinth, valerian, spikenard. Sometimes I do this in waves where I would do things that would clean up the tissue like Lovage or St. John's wort. And again, that doesn't really relax it, but it just cleans it up, uh, makes it for a longer lasting um, effect. And then I follow it with the terebinth. And then the go-to thing is vetiver or ruscus. And so we're going to inhale, but 
what you would want to do if you are up to it right now is I, I, whatever oil you're using here, I would also apply it. And so vetiver and rouscous are very thick. They come out very slow. So what I would do is undo the cap and I would literally just pop, pop the cap out, right? Pop the reducer. And then you can kind of go like this and then rub it on a spot. So you want to start like in the center, like where that little indention is at the base of your skull. Rub it all along there and along the side, all the way to around behind your ear. So just keep kind of putting some on the area and then rub it in. Even go up into the, into the hairline a little bit. Yeah, you can use different ones. Yeah. Um, I think I give them Valerian. Yeah. Yeah. The ones that did the kit for purchase, I made a little rollerball for you, Valerian, so you could just like rub it on without having to undo it all. Valerian and Vetiver, Spikenard, they're all very, very similar. Yeah, really get in there. If you find a spot that's tight in your in your head, in your scalp, you can do it. Now, the other area is this spot where the neck and shoulder kind of meet, that little tender spot. I'd hit that spot as well. That one you could do daily very easily. Like if you put oil there on a daily basis, your your shoulders will go from being up at your ears down to where normal people have them. Like, you know, you can feel like when you're getting stressed out, your your shoulders will start rising up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm um, better just to use plain spike dart. That that would be the best choice. I mean, if you don't have anything else, it's better better than anything. But yeah. Okay, I'll give you another minute to apply it if you're going to be doing that. I even put a little bit, if you're into it, like right in front of the ear, like on the jaw. Could you show where the indication Like right here. Now begin inhaling and your awareness is on that area, the base of your skull. That's nice, yeah? yeah. That was really nice. Boy, there was a period like, oh, God, that was probably 20 years ago. I did this every day for. I'm going to try to not exaggerate and say six months, but it was probably closer to a year. Just every day I'd rub some better at the base of my skull. You know, I'd had some. Well some some traumas to the neck you know whiplash kind of stuff and man just doing it consistently it changed my neck and shoulders totally changed it and then move your awareness to those 
points on your shoulders uh, where the shoulder and neck meet. And then check in with your body. Where do you feel it in your body? Do you feel something in your back, in your hips? You know, when you unwind the neck, your body might shift around. And one of the beauties of using um, like vetiver and spikenard, but valerian, is it helps, it is one of the best oils for muscle imbalances. So they're all good for muscle imbalances, spikenard, vetiver, ruscous, but valerian shines a little bit more. So they each have their little areas where they really shine. Your awareness is on your body. You're taking nice, long, slow, deep breaths. And then just pause and let go. How does your head feel? 
For those of you that meditate, this actually helps to open up the head for your meditation, especially blue pearl kinds of meditations. That's how it's to see. Yeah. And again, your awareness is on the base of your skull. Really even explore going up a little bit higher on the skull as you inhale. You can explore going down into the backside of your neck a little bit. And even into the tissues in the upper back area. Move your awareness to the tops of the shoulders, like this area right up in here. Ooh, can I have a little bit of a rollerball? I'm going to join you guys. Thank you. <laughs> that even took tension out of my jaws. Like I didn't think I had tension on my jaws until I left. And I was like, ooh. And then body awareness. And in this body awareness, I want to explore a couple of different areas. Like you, you're already kind of doing the back of the neck and up onto the back of the head. But... Put your awareness on the shoulder blades themselves. You know, the muscles of the shoulder blades. That will help relax all this area as well. So long, slow, deep breaths with your awareness on the shoulder blades. Hmm. 
Yeah, it's making me a little more like mm -hmm. hmm. still on your shoulder blades.
Just pause and be still for a moment. Go to the front side, like where this little crease is between the chest and the shoulder. Not really even a chakra, just this area of tissue on each side. Just inhale into that area. Let's go back to the base of the skull, where we started. Go to the base of your skull. See what you notice. Go to those points where the sh neck and shoulder meet.
Just let go for a moment. Check in with your back, your neck. Where do you feel something? And inhale into that area. Okay, let it go. Let it incubate for a moment. Let's go ahead and unmute or type in and let's share experiences and or ask questions. Should I put a call to help us relax though today? <laughs> Okay, I think that says it all. <laughs> it's very relaxing. It, you know, it takes tension out of your body. Like there's a couple spots in your body that like if you relax them, it relaxes your whole body. One's your head, one's your feet, um, arms and legs. Mm. Yeah. Um, my jaws are typically relaxed, are um, my left side of my neck now is tight, however. And then another asks, would the muscle tightness uh, in the shoulder blades affect the nerves in the hand clenching? Yeah, a lot of times there's issues in the hands where there's like numbness and things can be trigger points from the shoulder blades themselves. So there's tension in the neck left side of the neck Greg that's me yeah so um, is there something going on in that spot or like is that normal for you or is it just like unwinding in that spot didn't unwind as much or what, what do you think it is I think it may be just I'm more aware of the tension there now because my my jaws are so relaxed yeah my jaws are never that's possible relaxed. I mean wh whatever you're using like valerian or vetiver or whatever i'd even put some of that like go to like the base of the skull like behind here can you see where i'm pointing mm -hmm. and then go all the way like rub some all the way down into the shoulder blade most likely there's this muscle called the levator scapula let me see if i can bring it up and um my upper body's pretty much bathing in it at the moment <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to send, shoot a uh, picture over to Samantha. Hi, 
I suspect I'm more aware of it because, as I said, the tension is totally gone from my jaws and it almost never happens. I think it goes down the side of my neck inside the shoulder blade down to about the bottom of the shoulder blade. Okay, see if see if this looks like it's a thing. Take a second to get over to her, do you? Yeah, it's that whole patch of red all the way down along yeah. the shoulder blade. So like, just like I said, like if you take some of the vetiver and put it like on that spot back there and then just keep wiping it down till you get to the, the shoulder blade there, that should help unwind that. Okay. It's a, it's a very common um, muscle to get aggravated. And especially if you're like hunched over and doing stuff on the computer or you're under uh, where... Cold air is blowing down. Thank you. Yeah. Like, do you do stuff like on your computer, like on your lap or anything? Not on my lap, but I know the ergonomics aren't great. Yeah. 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 It's usually like kind of a hunched over with a chin forward. But even just a couple single, you know, a couple like application or two should unwind that quite substantially. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. My, I think my neck is getting longer. Yay. Yeah. So relaxed. Yeah. I have improved range of motion in my neck, but also really aware of the residual tension. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you want to treat it for a little while. Like, like I said, like I had had a neck pretty wound up. I did it every day for a while. And, um, you know, I was getting therapy before that, like on my neck and stuff. And it, it was okay. But when I did that, it was a game changer. Like it just, um, you know, I always say, oh, that's my favorite oil. Vetiver was my first favorite oil because of what it did to the base of my skull. I think that's it. Okay, so we're going to go to the top of page 15. We're going to do one more. It's a great way to end the day, deepening the breath. It really, you know, these two, the one we just did and the one we're about to do, I didn't intend for them to be like a one, two thing, but sometimes when you're trying to deepen the breath, this, this tension in the back of the neck, upper shoulders will diminish the ability for you to take a deep, deep breath. So they do kind of go hand in hand a little bit, but everything is really built, laid out here for it to stand on its own. It's not based on any sort of sequence or you know, everything you can do individually. So deepening the breath, um, part of the issue is um, uh, reduced oxygen intake, which will diminish 
um, brain function. It's called hypoxia. When you don't get enough oxygen in, you're not getting enough oxygen to the brain. You're not, not getting enough uh, uh, blood to the brain. And it will actually kind of throw how your cognitive functions work. You see that a lot with uh, asthma-like conditions or like a really tight neck, like a really tight neck can do it as well. Um, anytime you breathe really shallow and rapid, it increases muscular tension, fascial tension in the body. Anytime you have um, short, rapid breathing, um, uh, your ability to relax is diminished. You know, it pretty much magnifies anything that's in the solar plexus, like lower emotion, stress. It will magnify whatever is there. When your breath deepens, it tends to slow down and regulate. When it's more shallow, you breathe really rapidly. And so it can even cause like arrhythmias. It can cause uh, anxiety. I've seen it cause panic attacks. Um, uh, poor neurological function, uh, uh, digestive issues. Um, yeah. So increased anxiety, increased uh, uh, stress levels, getting rid of old used up air out of the lungs. You know, you tend to hold on to more carbon dioxide than normal. It reduces your lung capacity, you know, because you're only using the upper part. And, you know, when you don't breathe deep, you basically lose like some of the muscle tension in the lower lungs. Um, this will increase heart rate. It will call, uh, raise your pulse. Um, it will uh, spike your blood pressure and it causes tension in the diaphragm. And whenever there's tension in the diaphragm, it increases the tension in the muscles that run along the spine. So basically, it starts to tighten up the spine and compress your discs. So you have um, several choices. A lot of times we use HISA for this, but Ami Visnaga is one, frankincense, uh, HISA, Anula, Larch, Sitka. Actually, one that I just realized I left out was Myrtle. And we could add Myrtle to that. And then uh, bronchioles blend or the unconscious blend. So choose one of those oils. 